developmental dysplasia of the hip, or DDH, is a condition that can be identified in the neonate. One or both hip joints have not formed properly. The acetabulum, or the hip socket, is too shallow, and the hip is either dislocated at rest, or can be felt to easily dislocate by the examining physician. DDH is more common in first-born female babies, those born via a breech presentation, and where there is a family history of hip dysplasia. Children born with a unilateral dislocated hip will walk but will develop a noticeable limp as the affected leg is shorter and the hip muscles work less efficiently. As the child gets older, they may compensate by walking on tiptoes on the affected side. When both hips are affected, the child will have a waddling gait and will tire more easily as the hip abductor muscles work less efficiently. Over time, the patient develops a more noticeable lumbar lordosis. Without treatment, he or she will develop pain around the hip and back as a young adult. How can you identify a baby with hip dysplasia? There may be an extra fold of skin on the inside of the thigh. There is often restricted abduction of the affected hip. Sometimes parents will notice this while changing the baby's diaper. One leg may be shorter than the other. Lay the child on his or her back. Hold the legs together and flex the hips and knees. In the unilateral dislocation, the knees will be at slightly different levels. This is the Galeazzi test. Some babies with DDH have hips that we call unstable. They can be easily dislocated by the examining physician with a palpable soft click. This is the Barlow test. To perform the Barlow test, hold the hip flexed and adducted, holding your thumb in the medial thigh and fingers over the lateral aspect of the hip. Apply gentle pressure posteriorly. The hip can be felt to dislocate posteriorly with a soft click. The Ortolani test identifies the dislocated hip that can be reduced into the socket or acetabulum. The hip is abducted while the examiner's index finger gives anterior or forward pressure on the thigh over the greater trochanter. The hip can be felt to relocate with a soft click. These tests should be performed in early infancy as they usually become negative after six months of age. How can you identify a toddler or child with hip dysplasia? They walk with a limp or have a waddling gait. When the condition is unilateral, one leg is shorter than the other. One or both hips have restricted abduction. An x-ray shows that the hip is dislocated. Can this be treated? Absolutely. If the baby is diagnosed before six months of age, he or she can be treated in a special sling called a pavlic harness. It gently keeps the hip flexed and abducted, helping to reduce the dislocation and promote normal hip development. We would like to treat all children in this way, as no surgery is needed and it is easily managed. The harness is removed two months after the hip becomes stable and can be temporarily removed at bath time. If the diagnosis is made after a year, then surgery is needed to openly reduce the dislocated hip. In the older child, substantial surgery is required to stabilize the hip, often with combined femoral and pelvic osteotomies. We hope that babies born with dislocated hips will be identified early so they can be treated successfully in a pavlic harness. This will save the child major surgery and even a lifetime of disability.